Welcome, street rats, to Night City. I'm the one and only Mox11, bringing you slightly biased news footage from the fourth wall. Returning to Withertree Apartments, I'm not as cool under pressure as normal, but thankfully, Rex seems unfazed as we're approached by Militech personnel. They ask nothing more than if we're residents, and when I say we're visiting, they comment the person doesn't appear to be home, and I should probably take my leave. Unwilling to risk anything, I do so, where I my side as we take the elevator back to the ground level and drive around the arcology to the side where Soto's apartment would be, as it is on the outside of the building. If someone were to get in or out from the window, there's an overpass from the highway close by, but also plenty of room for an AV to fit. Back in the nook, I ask Rex to see if he can find anything out about Soda from his contacts in the street racing circuit. I also try to pay him for the evening, but he refuses any sort of cash, telling me to stop by later. While I plan to have a serious discussion with him about keeping things professional, it doesn't happen anytime soon as I spend the next week in therapy, finally feeling like my old self again. While I combat cyberpsychosis, Deeps crumbs out even more, pushing himself closer to the edge once he gets his cyber arm installed from Pons with a slot for a cyber deck inside. Of course, he does want it to match his aesthetic. So, do you see this boring stuff over here? Mm-hmm. Do you think when you have a time, we could work on doing some scales? Mmm. What color? I'm thinking like a... Blue-green pattern. Iridescent or something. Yes, iridescent, correct. Let me think about it. Yes, I can help you. Sweet. Alteki spends most of her days recovering from the mission, but does take a day to head to Murphy's Auto Repair to trade the Galena for the Mayhir. I still haven't heard anything from my contacts about Gaia Delilah and send a text in the middle of the week to all of them in hopes I hear something, but I'm not overly hopeful. This might require a more hands-on approach if we want to assist the Scud Warriors in bringing back the missing family member. Monday night, Deus calls us for a group hangout at Frank's hovel asking if we could pull a job before Wraith returns, as he needs some cash. He's only 100 ED short for rent, and I assure that won't be a problem, and we could even do something to help Rex set up that night market he's been wanting to run since, well, I met him. That settled, I also asked the group to come out and party with me the following night, and apparently the cryptic ass made some of them uncomfortable. There, I mean, I don't object, but is there any particular reason why, or just, we just want to have fun? There's a reason. And she drinks. Oh my god. Fucking god, Moxie. If this turns out to be a Jackal's Lantern 2, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I don't want you making any sort of deal about it, but tomorrow just so happens to be my birthday. What? Aww. Oh. Wow. And I've always spent my birthday with friends and family, and I would like to continue that. I don't want them to make a big deal out of it, and they agree before we discuss a new project stealing a couple arcade machines and turning them into a tank for Vim, with a hidden compartment in the bottom to hold the safe with Gojira's group funds. We drink and make our way out to get the machines when the cold weather hits our faces the moment we exit the building. Apparently, we're in a cold snap. Gotta love Night City weather. Not only are we up against Mother Nature, but as we near the alley leading towards the Burnt Head Arcade, Checkers spots more trouble. Checkers, however... You're able to like kind of squint your eyes and like kind of rub your hand against the uh, windshield as it's like fogging up from the difference of temperatures um, and squint your eyes looking through um, where you catch a glimpse of some of those people walking um, around the arcade and they're dressed in kind of like puffy um like puffer jackets uh, that are zipped up and high class um like kind of uh suit pants 
and um, at this point they have boots, but and kind of like you know beanies on and that kind of thing. They're dressed in various forms of kind of like cold gear, but um, they have some pretty obvious like cybernetic, uh, like some of them have some obvious cybernetic eyes of uh, different uh, colors um, and distinctive tattoos on their bodies that you can't quite make out. But one of them is illuminated to the point where you notice distinctly that he has some sort of tiger-like pattern on the back of his neck. Deciding not to push our luck, mostly because I don't intend to be injured on my birthday tomorrow, we plan to return in a couple of days and see if they've gone. The next day is a shopping spree, then a pub crawl as determined by the group for our activity of choice. I didn't really care what we did so long as I was surrounded by family and friends. Kami chooses the university district, and I pick out a bar called the Paragon. Seems tonight they're holding a trivia contest, and while I don't get all the questions in my section, overall we win the competition, earning us free drinks for the night, so long pub crawl, and a 500 Eddie gift card to Star Mall. The rest of the night has been drinking and dancing, some of us doing better than others. Imagine checkers is scaring people away from her. Yeah, <laughs> the floor has distinctively like cleared a little bit be- out of fear from being hit in the face because of, uh, like a person or two has certainly been stepped on or uh, you know elbowed or punched in in the face. Smacked. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna go dance with checkers since I noticed this. You notice this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, your dance is what a twelve? Um, yeah. Not not too horrible, and you're not drunk, so you don't get any sort of penalty. Um, I would say that Cammy would probably join you. Her dancing is pretty jarring as well, not nearly <laughs> to Checkers level, not even close. Um, but um, so the three of you guys are like dancing together. <laughs> I love this in so this much. like s- sort of like weird uh, triangle. Yeah, it feels like you've stepped into some buddy's indie film where they're dancing the nerdy <laughs> girl. Uh, or I'm sorry, filming the nerdy girl do some weird ass like interpretive dance that nobody quite understands. And you guys just all dance in this weird f- like. You all like sort of adapt Checker's weird dancing style. <laughs> yes. So yes. the whole like dance floor like <laughs> is incredibly uncomfortable with like what you're doing. Like they don't physically want to be close, but you're getting cheered on anyway. <laughs> Um, just because of how fucking weird it is. <laughs> and they're a bunch of college kids and they're all fucked up. And like, yeah, you just have this uh, good night where, you know, you do, you do all the weird dancing together. And um, yeah. We close out the bar. Cab our drunk ass is home. Well, Rex gives me a birthday present that's not for me. Um, in his jacket, he like pull something it's kind of like this object about yay big like uh i don't know i'm trying to think of like a good analogy um for the size like about six inches (laughs) um and kind of like oh uh, like an ellipsoid shape um and he says, hey, uh, heard it's your birthday. Kevin told me that's your birthday. And so, mm. and it's uh, wrapped in like a crinkled brown, like paper wrapping. He folds it out to you. I didn't want any presents, but thank you. Uh, it's not really for you, so I don't like sweating. you see, open it, open it. She's very confused that he got her birthday uh, present. It's not for her. <laughs> and in her drunken state, she's like, wait, what? And, and then it's like simple command. She's like, I do simple. Okay, I'll open it. You <laughs> open it. off the paper. And what's inside is a kind of like brown rock with a like a smooth top. 
and it's got a cord coming from it. What it is is a it's a heated rock. It's for Vim. <laughs> You got a heat rock for them. Oh, yeah, I noticed he didn't have anything very good uh, for that poor of, so I thought that. She kisses him. All right. He kisses you back. Sweet man, and a clever way to get around my feelings about presents, even if I'm currently too drunk to realize. My family has always celebrated birthdays the same way. Mother's wasn't exactly right. It was perfect for our group. He is just surviving another year. This has been your Shades of Scarlet recap with Moxie 11.